Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to do the MMA contrarian betting breakdown for tomorrow's card, which is now a, an 11 fight card. Uh, the Justin Tafa fight was just taken off the board, which is good news. That means uh, we only have a chance to lose uh, 11 units as opposed to the usual 12 or 13. Although we did have been doing pretty well recently. Uh, last week we had a couple of good underdogs, a couple of uh, very contrarian uh, inside the distance lines that we that we cashed on, among other things. So. Uh, again, the, the important thing to remember, again, about these videos is that we really can't be results oriented, right? even though we we do well sometimes, you, you know, it, it's really the process that is much more important for the purposes of these videos, because what we're trying to do is, yes, give you, you know, some cool stuff to bet on this weekend, but also try to train your uh, your, your mind to be thinking about these markets in a more contrarian way, you know, so that maybe you don't win this week, but at least you're starting to learn how to, I don't know, approach these things a little differently instead of just trying to out, you know, out analyze everybody to try to figure out where the psychology of some of these plays is coming from are coming from and, and psychology of some of these plays is coming from whatever. And uh, figure out how much of the line is being driven by narrative and groupthink and things like that. And this skill, if that can be developed over the years, um, will apply to all markets, whether it be this one, uh, sports betting in general, stock market, anything where there's, you know, where where, where it, a whole group of people are combining their opinions to create a lot. Um, and what I found, though, is that the MMA space is particularly suited to this type of approach because... The way groupthink works with an MMA is everybody usually has about a week to figure something out. And the human brain is an amazing thing. You know, they, they, you start to convince yourself of a narrative or of a thing that's going to happen. Okay. Not something that could happen, but that's going to happen. And in UFC, what happens is people settle on a very binary outcome, meaning that either X wins in this way or Y wins in that way. And what I found is in this particular sport, it's a sport that's ripe with chaos. And the, the most likely thing to happen is almost always easy to spot and almost always incredibly overbet, okay, because of that. So what, we what we're trying to accomplish here is to figure out what that is and then fade it. Not because it's less likely, to, more like, less likely to happen, but because you're naturally getting terrible odds on something that is that easy to see. And that's just the way life and betting markets work. The easier something it is to notice, the more likely people are going to get on it. And then with the way UFC, you know, groupthink works, it's it's amazing how everybody feeds off one another. And where at the beginning of the week it was, I don't know, Daniel Barlow's win condition is 60, you know, 60% of the time he's going to win is going to be a first round knockout. By the end of the week, it's like a hundred percent. You know, it's just and that's it's 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 ridiculous, but that's the way it goes, specifically in this sport. So Let's go through this and we're going to, you know, examine what the, the common narratives of the fights are. And then we're going to try to find something that does not fit that common narrative yet still has a shot to win. And that sweet spot is sort of the, the value spot. Now, again, let's go over the rules here. We have 11 fights and we are going to bet one thing on every fight. And uh, obviously, it's not, that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Uh, in addition to that, we are going to be betting one unit on every fight. And again, that's not the best money management system in the world either, but we don't care. Uh, and for us, a one unit is remains $180 uh, and, uh, until, the, uh, until the situation in Israel is, 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 uh, is, um, has been resolved. It's going to probably stay at $180 for 10 times high luck, which means it's going to stay 10 times high until the end of time. But that's another story. Anyway, um, the other thing is that we are going to presume, because we're being contrarian and because we like to do this, that the first 10 fights on the card, we are going to lose. So uh, the rule is, is that in the 11th fight in the main event, we are going to have to bet something that gets our money back. So the, the main event, we always want to give something which is 10 to 1 or higher and have a little fun with it. Okay, uh, let's get going. Uh, first fight on the card, we have Miranda Maverick versus Andrea Lee. And this is not, you know, this is not the greatest but, you know, here's what's been going around the campfire. Okay. I mean, Andrew Lee definitely has that vet savvy 
Uh, she's a little bit over the hill, though. And Miranda Maverick, she is, you know, she's younger, she's faster, and she might have some takedown upside. The thing is that Miranda Maverick's been taking down fighters that are just really, really weak with their ground game. So uh, you're actually getting a little bit of money line steam on Andrea Lee. Uh, one thing that I will say is that if Andrea Lee is going to win, according to the odds makers, uh, according to the group think, it's going to be kind of a boring decision. And if Miranda Maverick wins, I guess she has a chance to get a submission. Um, so there's really nothing that really characterizes a common narrative here. I guess if you wanted to be contrarian, you could do something like Andrea Lee inside the distance, because I don't think anybody's doing that. Um, or you could maybe play Miranda Maverick um, maybe by KO, because she, again, is, you know, if anything, she's going to get takedowns and get to a decision or takedowns and maybe get to um, or maybe uh, uh, get a submission. So let's just take a look at some of these odds here. Uh, and again, this is not the greatest one to do because there's not an overwhelming uh, narrative on either side. Uh, but because we're going to bet one thing every fight, we're going to do it. And we're going to go uh, Miranda Maverick by KO is plus 10 to 1. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that is interesting, huh? But oh boy, oh boy, Miranda Maverick by sub is plus 450. I mean... I don't know if we can pass this one up, honestly. I don't know if we can pass this one up. We have another one. We're going to do a ridiculous win by KO later. So let's just, let's, let's win that a little bit. This is sort of within the narrative, but not really. So we're going to take Miranda Maverick to buy sub plus 450 for 180. Uh, okay. Moving on. We have uh, Oban Elliott versus Val Woodburn. So I don't know exactly where this is coming from, but there's a little bit of steam on the Val Woodburn side here. The idea that Val Woodburn came in to fight Bo Nickel, and obviously, you know, he had no chance against Bo Nickel. But for whatever reason, this Oban Elliott is getting just really sort of disrespected. And people are calling out Val Woodburn as being kind of this good punt play and this good long shot. I, I don't exactly get it. Um, so Oban Elliott is minus 325. So this is going to be one of those weird situations where it's going to be a you know contrarian play because even though it's going to be the favorite, so we're just going to play Oban Elliott by submission here um, and fade this kind of weird uh, Val steam. So uh, Elliott by submission plus two fifty makes sense to me uh, plus the one eighty. All right, Josh Quinlan versus Danny Barlow. All right, so I've never seen this dude fight, but apparently the Danny Barlow, that his nickname is like God of the Left Hand or something, you know, and that's where his all of his power comes from, and that's what he's he's known for and stuff like that. Um, Josh Quinlan, he uh, apparently, if he's going to win this fight, it's going to be due to wrestling. So it, he's either going to win either by submission or by, by decision. And Barlow, it's 100% sure that if he wins, it's going to be by KO. So these are the things we can't bet, right? What we could bet is either, well, we could play Quinlan by KO, but that's completely not, you know, not, not really logical. But the two things we could try, okay? We could try, boy, if we were really, really super super sassy we would play danny barlow by decision excuse me uh by submission with the idea being and we cash on this a couple of times that if someone's going to go for takedowns you know who's to say they don't get submitted right if everything's kind of rolling around on the ground maybe just maybe the danny barlow has some submission upside somehow so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to look and see if that's the case i want to see if danny barlow has ever want to fight by submission. We're going to say this. If he has, we're going to take a shot. And if not, we're going to just play him by decision. So let's see. How can you have this from law school MMA? Left hand to God. Let's see. Left hand to God. 
TKO, TKO, TKO. He does have a submission. He does have a submission. Boy, oh boy. And he does have a decision. So I promise you this, that him by submission is going to be a billion to one. I'm afraid to even look at it. Let's see. It's actually only plus 900. So that's not that big a deal. So we're, we are going to play. Well, that's Quinlan. Barlow by submission is only plus 800. Well, I was expecting to get a little better than that. Barlow by decision is only plus 300. I was expecting to get a little better than that, too, if you want to know the truth. But I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of feeling it. Let's do it. Let's do Barlow by submission plus the 180. I'll tell you, this is, this is legitimately going to be the fight card where we go 0-10. I'm just saying in advance for the main event. So be prepared to try to get our money back later. All right, so Zhang Minyang versus Brandon Ribeiro. I always do this, and I have to say that it has been working out pretty nicely. This is a war, okay? You have two fighters that are, and I'm throwing out some, uh, whatchamacallit, some uh, platitudes that you're going to hear throughout all content this week. If, if, you, if you were listening, this is what you heard literally all week long. Um, if they're, it's going to be a war. It's a the, each fighter is a quote killed or be killed fighter. They block punches with their face. They have no defense, and these guys are going to go to war. And someone is getting knocked out in the first round, and I don't know who it is. So there are only two things we can bet here. It depends how sassy you want to get, or saucy or sassy. One thing we could do is bet the over, which is over one and a half. Well, the other thing is bet the fight to go to the distance. And that's probably, that's got to be pretty brutal. Let's take a look and see what it is. So over one and a half is plus 220. I mean, you're telling me this to go the distance is only plus five. Then. Yeah, we're, 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 we're going to go. We'll play the over. Fine. I can't help myself. Over one and a half. Plus one eighty. Now there's something to be said in the in the in the betting community that if you if you play something like this, you are clenching your butt cheeks, which means that oh, you're just you're just just praying that this that this you know that this doesn't finish or whatever. You know what? Just don't watch them. You know what I mean? What you do is what you do here. Is is you, you put the fight on, and then you just kind of take like a lap around, and you go to the you know you go to the bathroom, whatever. And if you come back and there's like a commercial, then you know that it went to the second round. And if you come back and you see like this like commotion in the middle of the ring, then you know that you lost, you know, something like that. So uh, yeah, if you don't want to stress it, then just don't watch. But I think this is where the value is over plus over one and a half plus the two twenty for one eighty. Rinka Nakamura, Rinya Nakamura versus Carlos. Sierra. So this is what we got. We have somebody who is a world-class wrestler who has a knockout and a decision on his record. Okay. Um, his first fight, he knocked the guy out in the first round. His second fight, he was against Fernie Garcia. And the thing about that is that Fernie Garcia is really, really tough. So, so I'm not surprised that he was not able to get him out of there. Um, but I do think that he's going, he's going to get Carlos Vera out of there. Uh, there's a little bit of hesitation to play him inside the distance because you know he didn't get Fernie Garcia out of there. So I think there's okay value in 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 either thing that he does. So we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna this might be a little bit square. But, you know, I'm going to do it anyway. We'll play Nakamura by submission. He's, he's got to win by decision. He's got to win by KO. How about he does what he wants and gets the win by submission? So Nakamura by submission plus the one. Amanda Limosh versus uh, Mackenzie Dern. Um, striker versus grappler. 
Um, and you have Mackenzie Dern is just coming off of a, of a performance where she couldn't get the takedowns and ended up getting knocked down four times by, uh, who was it, Hibas um, or Andraj? I forget which one it was. In either case, she uh, got blasted. She's back in pretty short notice, if you want to know the truth. Not in short notice, but in, they had a lot of layoff between that beating. And Amanda Limo, she, you know, she had a title shot. She didn't do so well. And she's got some pretty bad takedown defense, but she's got some power. So it's one of those situations where, you know, it's Kenzie Dern can get the takedowns. It's it's her by submission all day. And that's what the narrative is saying. So you can't play Dern by submission. You just can't. Um, and I think that the that Dern, the fact that she just got KO'd by someone like Lemos in the last couple of fights, um, I think Lemos by KO is also going to be pretty unplayable. So I think what you could do is you could play either of these fighters by decision. And I think it's, you know, well within your rights to do that. Let's take a look and see what the odds are. Um, Dern by decision plus 400. 400? And Lemos by decision plus 350. Well, figured out what we want to do, right? Can't figure out which one, so we're just going to bet the fight to go the distance. Nice and easy. Fight to go the distance plus the 150 for 180. Okay. Um, Anthony Fluffy Hernandez versus Roman Kopulov. Again, very, very easy. Very binary outcome. You have Anthony Hernandez who pushes the pace to no, like nobody except for someone we're going to get to. Uh, goes for extreme takedowns. And Roman Kopulov does not have the best takedown defense. Okay. So if Hernandez wins, he's going to just smother him and wear him out. And he could get a submission. He can get a KO. He's won by all kinds of different methods. And the only thing is, is Hernandez, he's been shown to have a little bit of weakness in the body. So if, if Roman Kopilov, who is an extremely strong striker with a four straight KOs, can get knock and, uh, Fluffy out, then that's his path to it. So um, Kopilov by KO, can't bet it. Hernandez by submission, by I mean, you really can't bet any of these things. The only thing you can bet here, and this is definitely in the range of outcomes, is Kopulov by decision? I mean, what what if, you know, what if Kopulov, you know, keeps him at bay, wins a striking battle, you know, now, excuse me, keeps his keeps him, you know, from taking him down and just wins a striking based decision? Um, what if, you know, Hernandez does take him down, but just can't, you know, can't do enough. And it's one of those fights where the where the referees favor the 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 striker. I'm telling you this, no one's betting this, and the line is going to be huge. Yep. Uh, copy love by decision, plus 650 for 180. The only other thing you could do, by the way, is you could bet copy love just straight up. Okay, because um, I really haven't heard too many people taking him at all. And that might be the more reasonable thing to do because – you get that decision outlier, and you also do get that camp. You know, we are going to do that. That's my, that's, that's my bad. We're going to go. We're just going to take Kopulov just plus the 200, which is fine, for 180. All right, uh, moving on, we have Marab Di Havashvili versus uh, Henry Cejudo. So we've got a lot of stuff going on here. We have incredible name value on both sides. You have kind of like the old school UFC, you know, veteran uh, betters who know Henry Cejudo forever, you know, world-class, you know, Olympic wrestler, champ, all this stuff, you know, he's been around forever. And then you have the people that just got into this a couple of years ago who see Marab, who's essentially a machine. You know, the guy just, just brings the heat. Every single fight, he's not lost since I've still been watching. And every time you think you want to fade him, you just lose, you know. And, and even when you get the fight you want, like when I remember he was fighting against Jose Aldo, 
people are saying, well, Jose Aldo has, has great takedown defense. This is going to expose him. And you, and Aldo got exactly what he wanted in that Murab couldn't even take him down. And yet still Murab won. So like it, everything went the worst for him. He's still winning. So what is what people are, are pretty sure of is that First of all, if Marab wins, he's going to do what he always does. Get a whole bunch of takedowns, grind him out, you know, whatever it is. So Marab, by decision, he just, he just can't bet it. Um, Cejudo has been talked about during the course of the week, has been, you know, he has more better striking. So he's got KO upside. So there are some people that are playing Cejudo because of his name and because people think that maybe it's a it's the step up is too much, especially given that price. So I don't think there's a lot of value on him or even by KO. But I want to suggest that if, in fact, Marab does get his takedowns, why can't he get the KO? Why can't he get on top of, of, of Cejudo, have Cejudo quit, and have him pound him out? Well, we're going to find out. So we are going to try this. I, I, I settled on this without even seeing what the odds are, which is probably pretty stupid. But that's what we're doing. Let's see what it is. Marab by KO plus 550. Let's go. I mean, he's 30. I mean, Suda's 37 years old. You think he's getting pounded out on the freaking ground? He's going to be that guy that like wants to die in the ring? No, I mean, he'll, you know, I, I don't, I don't think that the referees will let that happen. And I think you'll get, you know, if he gets, if, if Marab gets what he wants and gets on top and starts raining down punches, I think it could be a quick stoppage. And you get the KO plus five. Anyway, moving on. We have Jeff Neal versus Ian Gary. Ian Gary, the uh, the fighter that everybody likes to hate. Um, and this we've seen this before. You you have this is this is what people are saying. So Ian Gary, I want him to lose. I want him to lose. I hate him. Love Jeff Neal, but I just can't do. It. And, and that's what people are saying. I, at the end of the day, Ian Gary is going to keep Jeff Neal at range and probably win a decision. But if Jeff Neal can crash the pocket, he is live for a knockout. So we're learning here, right? What can't we bet? We cannot bet. We really can't even bet Jeff. Well, we can bet Jeff Neal, but we can't bet Jeff Neal by knockout. Okay? Because that's, that's what people are presuming is going to happen for Jeff Neal to win. And Ian Gary, we can't really bet by decision because that's what people are just naturally expecting to happen. And people are pounding these props. There's naturally bad value in these. So what we can do is we can either do something like Jeff Neal by decision. And I'll tell you something. Uh, if it's close, considering the uh, kind of like the anti-Ian Gary uh, stuff out there, maybe, just maybe, they give Jeff Neal a tight decision. Or the other narrative is that Ian Gary happens to be awesome. And Ian Gary just wins inside the distance. And uh, that's the one I think I'm going to do. Because I don't think anybody wants to do that. No one wants to root for Ian Gary. So we'll be the ones. So Ian Gary inside is probably going to be plus 150 or something like that. I don't know whether I would do KO or submission or whatever. Because I happen to think that he might have some submissions in there also. Uh so we'll just play him inside the distance. It's going to be, it's not going to be much, but I think that's kind of the contrarian play anyway. Ian Gary by TK or submission plus 180. That's good enough. That's a terrible price. Which is why it's going to win. All right. Um, two more fights. We have Robert Whitaker versus Paolo Costa. Paolo Costa has a puncher's chance. He has big power, and Robert Whitaker has, you know, uh, kind of a kind of a chin issue. You know, he's gotten knocked that down a bunch of times, and if Paul Acosta is going to win, that's the way he's going to get it done. So uh, that's what you cannot bet, right? We're learning here. So you can't bet Paul Acosta by K. Robert Whitaker, you know, if his he's going to win, he's going to piece him apart. You know, uh, maybe a, a late late third round finish or something like that, but most likely decision people are not doing because nobody can see this really happening, I guess, is the Robert Whitaker round one. Okay. 
So people are saying Paul Acosta, him, him round one, he, he can get that done, but Robert Whitaker's going to piece him up. So naturally, I think that the Whitaker round one prop has to be really juicy. So let's see what it is. Whitaker, well, it's just KO round one. See, I don't want to do that because there is a there is a world where he gets a submission. Wait, oh boy, Whitaker by submission plus 12. I mean, he has gone for takedowns recently. Can we do it? Well, this is going to be the rules. If he has ever won a fight by submission, not ever, he's been around a long time. It's got to be in the last like 10 or something like that or 12. We'll do this. Otherwise, we'll play him round one. So let's take a look and see. All right. Let's see, take a look at his record. We are real. I'm really losing you guys a lot of money this week. I apologize, but this is what I, you know, this is what contrarian betting will do to you. Um, okay, let's look at Whitaker's record here. TKO punches, decision, 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 KO, 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 KO. Yeah, no, 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 no. He has a submission in 2011. That's not going to work. So we are going to go with Whitaker by TKO round one plus 550. Boy, that's not a lot of room to work. So dumb, it just might happen. All right, so let, let's let's review what we've done here. And all we've done is torch money. But it's listen, it's in the name of, of developing our mind. So we're investing. I'm investing eighteen hundred dollars plus another one eighty coming in your future. All right, how about that? So the eighteen hundred dollars is going to include losing one eighty on Maverick by submission over the vet savvy Angela Lee, the uh, Oban Elliott who's I don't know, getting all this Val chest deal with this Val Wolburn steam. I don't know what that is, but Danny Barlow, you know, hand to God, left hand, repetitive by submission. Okay. Um, Zinmin Yang versus Brandon Rubio, Riviero, um, killer be killed fighter. Maybe they can be killed after 230 of the second round. Um, Nakamura by submission, uh, plus two seven. That's actually pretty reasonable. I'm kind of embarrassed by this one just because it is a reasonable result. But I think that most people, you know, haven't seen it yet. So they're less likely to bet it, I suppose. Uh, Lemos Dern, if Lemos wins, it's going to be by KO. If Dern wins, it's going to be by submission. So we'll bet, bet the fight to go the distance. Uh, Roman Kopulov, just his, his takedown upside, excuse me, his takedown defense is just too poor. And as they say in the platitude business, styles make fights, which means that Fluffy Hernandez is going to take him down, smother him. Not to mention that Kopulov is coming in here on short notice. How can he win? Well, maybe one out of three times he'll do it. Uh, Marab, uh, he's either going to, he's going to probably do have that one of that boring type fight where he grinds the guy out, but. Get him, get him on top. Get some KOs at five plus five fifty. We'll try it. Who wants to bet Ian Gary? Nobody. And if you do want to bet him, he certainly is just going to keep him at range and win by decision. There's another hundred eighty down the drain. And then finally, we have Robert Whitaker, who you know he's just hasn't doesn't finish anybody. That's just the bottom line. And not only does he not finish anybody, but Paulo Costa has all the first round upside. So why would we bet Robert Whitaker plus the five fifty? Beats me. But uh, I guess the reason why is because we know we're going to get it back in this main event. And I don't even know what we're doing yet. So we are now 0-10, and, and we now have to get something 10-1 to 1 in, the, in the main. So this has been, unfortunately, has been analyzed to death. And you want to pick a side between uh, Volkanovsky and Zipporah, I promise you, you're not getting any edge. promise you. Analyzed to death. All the narratives have been played out. Volkanovsky is old, but he has vet set. You know what I mean? Like all, all of it. Okay. So let's talk about what people have discussed. That Tapuria, he's his most likely form of victory is by K. He's got the better boxing. Okay. So his most likely form is going to be by KO. So unfortunately, Tapuria by KO is just kind of out of play here. Okay. And with Volkanovsky, he is very, very, you know, he's very, uh, what you call it, very versatile. He, if any of these two are going to probably win with takedowns, it's probably going to be him. So if he wins, it's probably going to be some kind of 
decision or maybe, maybe a submission, I guess, maybe. So what are we allowed to bet, right? If we can't bet Volkanovsky by decision, we can't bet any of these fighters, we can't bet Tapuria by KO, and we have to get 11 to 1. Well, we could either bet on Marab, excuse me, by uh, to Volk, Volkanovsky by knockout. We can bet on him. We still could play him by submission if we get the right round. Or, or we could go with Tapuria by submission. Any of those things going to be 11 to 1 without picking the right round? I don't think so. But let's just take a look. What, let's start with Tapuria by submission because that would end this pretty quickly. No. So Tapuria by submission is plus 550. Volkanovsky by submission plus 1400? Well, that's it. I mean, that's it. No one's playing it. Totally logical. Let's go. So, again, this $1,980 was invested in your future and hopefully to build your, you know, your brain, you know. So I hope you appreciate that. Hey, if you if you tail this, whether you bet 180 or 18 or 1800, you know, operate at your own risk. But I do promise you this, that all of these wagers are not popular I can't like promise that they're all good value because I honestly don't know. But based on my experience dealing with these markets, I imagine that all of these bets are probably good value. That will do it. And I'll be putting these in, by the way, after I log off. Zoom won't let me as I'm recording, as I'll show you. Just, just tell them. They'll say, whoops, look around, right? Yeah, there you go. Checking location, look around. So once I log off, I will be putting these, these in. Stay tuned for either later tonight or tomorrow morning when we will do the uh, the lineup construction video for the DFS piece, and uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.